All right, welcome. Uh, in this video, I want to do uh, take another look at uh, reductions. I want to do a reduction here uh, between two problems. One of the problems I want to look at is this one that I've got here, uh, vertex cover. And I don't think I've taken a look at this in, a, in an earlier video, so I do want to take a moment to, to just uh, explore the problem here. So this is another graph problem where we're given a graph as our input. Um, and in this case, we're also given a threshold value k, in this case, any uh, non-negative value k. And then we want to answer yes if there's a vertex cover of size k. Now, what a vertex cover is, is I've got stated sort of logically here. It's going to be a subset of the vertices. So this v prime is what we're calling the vertex cover. It's going to be a subset of the vertices. Um, the k threshold is telling us the size, so we want to make sure it's less than or equal to k. And then we uh, have to check that it actually covers the edges. The, what makes a vertex cover a cover is that every edge, so if you have an edge in the edge set, then one of its endpoints must be in the vertex cover, or both, but at least one of them must be in there. So uh, I think I'll do a, just a simple little example here. Let's say we, we grab ourselves uh, a graph here. Uh, I just sort of drew it kind of randomly here. Um, but if we want to build a vertex cover of this graph, here maybe I'll put another node right here, then if we want to do a vertex cover, I might pick that node itself. That will cover off some of the edges on the side here. Um, and then maybe I'll pick this one and this one, because that will get me these, these edges here. It will also get me both of these edges here. So I just need to cover this edge here, so I maybe I'll pick this one here. So the circled vertices that I have here constitute a vertex cover. Now, uh, my, my goal for working with this problem is let's, let's assume that I want to show that vertex cover is NP complete. If I want to do that, I have two things I need to show. I need to show that it's NP and that it is NP hard. And, and so we can do that in two steps. And in fact, why don't I go ahead and do that for this uh, problem? We'll start with uh, NP. So if we want to show it's an NP, we need to build a verifier for it. And remember, a verifier takes an extra piece of input called the proof, the certificate, or the witness, whatever is given to us by the prover. And so the idea here in vertex cover is if, if our prover were to tell us which set of vertices, then we should be able to um, check it ourselves. Now I'm going to still call that W for witness, but my first check is if W is not a subset of V, so I'm doing this part of the check first, say no. Okay, then what? Well, the rest of my yes here is going to tell me the other checks that I need to do. I should check this then. So if the size of W is greater than K, say no. Okay, that got us this bit. Well, let's just keep going. The next bit is then checking to see if it's indeed a cover. So, if U, V is an edge, now we're going to look to see if it's violated such that both of these are not in, such that, if, so if U, V is an edge such that uh, U is not in W, and v is not in w and i said in so let's make these knots it's not in w then we'll say no because this test here is saying if we can find an edge where neither of its endpoints are covered then we have an uncovered edge we should say no if we pass this one we've got all the conditions in my yes criteria here so i must be able to say yes and we might want to argue that this is correct in two branches, and maybe I'll, I'll make some space over here. Um, I'll start with my yes implies yes argument. And that means I need to assume we have a yes instance. So assume G has a vertex cover of size uh, K, then uh, let W be this cover, then we want to argue that it passes the test. So since uh, W is a subset of V, it passes the first test, and since the size of W 
uh, is less than or equal to k, well specifically equal to k, uh, we pass the second test. Finally, uh, it covers all edges, so it passes the final test. And we say yes. And that's what we were trying to argue, so we're done. So let's do the other branch then. No implies no, so we're just going to start out with the opposite assumption. Assume we have no vertex cover. Then we always start this out by assuming we're going to pass the first two tests, so, uh, so that we've, we pass as many pot tests as possible. So we'll assume that W is a subset of V and that it has the appropriate size, then it can't possibly cover. So, so there must be an uncovered edge and we end up saying no. So again, this verifier is sufficient to argue that vertex cover um, is in NP, but we now want to argue that it is also uh, NP hard to conclude that it is NP complete. So to show that it is NP hard, we now need to go and take a known problem, a problem we know is uh, NP hard, and we need to reduce it down to our problem, uh, vertex cover. Okay. Now which known problem we should use, that's up to us, um, but usually you want to pick a problem that is close by vertex cover. And so the problem that I'm going to pick uh, is independent set. Now the reason I want to do this, the reason I want to pick this is let's go back to the example we were looking at earlier. And remember the, the vertex cover that we selected. I think it was this vertex cover here. Well let's look at the remaining vertices. The remaining vertices, um, notice none of them have an edge between them. And this is going to be true for any vertex cover. And let's see if we can argue this. The argument that I'm about to make is going to be sort of the critical piece uh, in our proof of correctness, but I'm going to make it up front so that we can be confident that our strategy will work. Which is, um, consider any two points that are not in our vertex cover. Okay. Assume one of them had an edge between them. If they did, then that edge would not be covered, and so our original set would not be a vertex cover. So because we assumed the original set was a vertex cover, there must not be any edges between any of the vertices left out of the vertex cover. That means they must be an independent set. So what we're sort of identifying here is a relationship between a vertex cover and an independent set. And we can use that relationship to build ourselves a mapping that's going to reduce vertex cover, or rather the other way around. So we want to do independent set to vertex cover. So I'm going to take in uh, the input to vertex cover, which is a graph, sorry, an input to independent set, which is a graph and k. And down here, I want to return uh, a graph, a different graph maybe. And so here I'll say b prime and e prime, which I might have to set up up here, and a k prime. Okay, which means my mapping needs to do, okay, what is v prime? what is E prime, and what is K prime. Now, luckily, the example that we considered, we didn't actually change the graph at all. We left V, or V prime is V, and E prime is E, the exact same graph, but now we're looking for, if we had a vertex cover of size K, the independent set was supposed to be all the other vertices and vice versa this goes both ways so we're actually starting with an independent set so if we start out with the independent set of size k how big is the vertex cover that we're going to get well it's it's sorry it's going to be the size of v minus k the the vertices that are left over okay again this is our mapping it 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 is uh, it is a mapping from independent set to vertex cover but we need to prove it's correct too. So again, I'm going to do a yes implies yes. And again, here that means if we had a yes instance here, we get a yes instance down here. So assume, so assume G has an independent set of size K. So that makes it a yes instance above here. Now what we need to argue is that this, uh, this graph down here has a vertex cover. Okay. So what I'm going to now say is that uh, all edges connect vertices 
not in this independent set. So all edges are covered by the remaining vertices. So G has a vertex cover of size the size of V minus K. Well that's what we set up over here. Okay, this is K prime, this is G prime, so we're done. Now I usually like to do yes implies yes backwards because we should be getting the exact same argument again. Okay, so we're just going backwards now. So I'm starting at the end. I'm going to say assume G prime has a what? A vertex cover of size K prime. Okay, we're going to use the same, same argument here. So, um, so since uh, every edge is covered by this set there is no edge between vertices not in this set okay so there's no edge between vertices not in this set so the remaining vertices are an independent set of size the size of v minus k prime which is equal to k. So we're done. Uh, so we've actually shown this reduction is correct. Um, and I, I guess the only thing we haven't commented in both our MP proof and in, in our reduction here is on the amount of time it takes. This should be fairly straightforward. There's only there's a constant amount of time to do the uh, reduction here. Um, so uh, sure enough, we've shown a polynomial time reduction between these two. So our problem here, vertex cover, at least if we believe independent set is NP complete, then we should believe that vertex cover is NP complete as well. Okay, so this, uh, this video was just intended to be a quick demonstration that uh, vertex cover was NP complete by going through the motions of both providing a verifier for it and providing a reduction from a known NP-complete problem here, independent set, to our problem vertex cover. Alright, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.